the matches started a bit earlier of course for viewers uh, don't have to take too much of the waiting time as well so into the picks and bands we go it will be SAJ on the blue side Aces fade on the red of course and uh, some rapid fire bands coming through Zeref being taken away as well as Kalista on the south side of Jeff is going to run with the last Ari Ben as well and Aces fade going to take out the rumble and the pants down here so very interesting bands coming from SAJ as well as Aces and Victor as well as Hacker both of these champions new Surprise wave of the month still available for both of these two teams. Rexa, however, has been banned out, and we have to see what the Saga and Jokers will be going for over here. Uh, actually, I wouldn't be too surprised if they just uh, lock the hacker room right for themselves. But it's like Nick's Water has uh, other things in mind. Gonna take away the Malkai instead. Gonna go with the more safer choice in this uh, case. And Mew here gonna look forward to that least him performance after. Both have fell as well as Red Side has been taken away. So very heavy denial away from safety. And one of the other junglers that he plays is a Lee Sin. So I'm not gonna deny that option away from him. And for Shady as well, gonna deny the Corky away from Sue in this situation. So Corky as well as Lee Sin being picked up by Ace yeah. Fate over here. But we have to see what Saigon Jokers will be going for. This is rather interesting. So they have done a little bit of a swap around. Some roster swaps coming in. I do believe Prince, the previous AD carry, yeah. is no longer playing for them now. Sue has moved into the AD carry position. Oh. Carrot, the previous sub mid laner, they refused to run this duo mid lane team composition with Lovita playing assassins and Carrot playing mages. Now Carrot will be playing support for the team. So Saigon Joker's checking out the roster a little bit. We have to see if this affects their overall performance. So they've locked into the Maokai. They will be going for the Jarvan as well, playing lots of utility for themselves. This Lulu will be a flex pick now with the Maokai being locked oh. in the top lane. It's either a mid lane Lulu or a support Lulu that Saigon Jokers will be playing. Yeah, support Lulu has been sort of coming back into the competitive play. Uh, I think the biggest showing it has been in IAM Katowice. It was last boy you know he was the original lulu support as well but this time around he's kind of shown us that you know lulu support is, is still pretty legit in this case and he still might be the case coming through from here and let's look at what aces fate will choose to uh you know wrap up their compositions right here will they go for the oriana and the Irelia? if they do decide to do so it's a very early reveal on their solo laners here so Aces Fate, they like to place Orianna in the mid lane, it's one of Jinky's favorite champions, but they've quite a few times in the group stage itself. They said they will be speeding the mid lane pick to last in this case, and let's see what they will be going for. They will be picking the Arella into a Maokai, rather interesting position. Oh no, they're going to be swapping up, so it is going to be tank versus tank. In the top lane, it is going to be Scion for Aces Fate, up against Vix Water, Maokai. Yeah, that's why I do like the Sire lock-in on the side of Aces Fate. you got to fight fire with fire. So if Saigon Jokers is going to bring a very tanky frontliner, you want something similar for uh, Aces Fate as well. You know, just having the Sire in the mix. The thing about Sire is that he can do very well for himself it, with, with regards to the laning. And you know, having the raw of the onslaught can just clear minion waves. So you don't have to worry too much for the waves to push against you. And you do have very good wave clear as well to match that up to Maokai Strength. So, very different champions, but very similar in terms of the kit itself. So for the Sargon Jokers, now it's just turn 50s and hover over the Orianna pick over here. If they go for Orianna, Lulu is going to be a little bit of a shoe composition that the sister team Sargon Fantastic Five tried to pull off in the previous game. Yeah. What is a sex with it? Yeah. But we have to see what they decide to go oh. for over here. I think they're learning from the mistakes from SF5. They're not going to be going all in on one single damage sauce they will be picking up a Lissandra for themselves as well I do believe that will be a Lulu support and a Lissandra in the mid lane yeah so we will be seeing that Lulu support I personally am very excited for that one because uh, back in the day when Lulu just came out and you know uh, everyone started playing Lulu in the solo laners she was pretty much one of the strongest support back uh, in I would say early season 3 or even late season 2 when she just appeared on some of the Swift. so we'll see Saigon Jokers bringing that one around and we'll see what Aces Fate decides to choose for their mid lane. I believe it should be the Orianna for themselves. Like you mentioned, Jinky does like to play a fair bit, often banned away from them. But Orianna is at the stage of the game where it is going to be quite difficult for her to survive through the lane phase just because her numbers have been dwindled down a fair amount. But nevertheless, if it's a comfortable if it is going to be a comfortable champion of your choice, there's no harm picking that one. And it looks like after the long 
ticking time, it's going to be that Oriana secure on the side of SAJ as well as Ace of Spades. So, with both composition being lined up already, I believe we do have a short feature video for Saigon Jokers. It's uh, going to wait for the, the timer to actually run out before we actually show that to you guys. So, talking a little bit about this composition, or oh, once again, it's back to us, Cast System View, we'll be bringing you that video very shortly. Then, so that's the so short feature video for Saigon Joker said. Like you mentioned, uh, we do have a bit of a sort coming through. Prince is not playing AD carry for Saigon Joker this time around, and Sue will be filling that shoes with Carrot. Previously, the mid substitute is gonna fill in that support role, and we'll see if that is gonna affect the gameplay for Saigon Joker. Well, I mean, the previous series against the in this Gaming Legends looked a little bit shaky in terms of their pick-up and their approach. They, they did manage to come back from a deficit in their first game. Second game, once again, didn't respect the composition from IGL and ended up dropping the game to them. And now they are facing off against Ace of Spades. We have to see if they will show the same level of execution that they have been able to show us in the group stages. Yeah, that's right. And Saigon Jokers, I think one of the... It's safe to say that they are one of the favourites coming into this uh, particular split itself where you do see the, the departure of the Taiwanese teams and out of six of, out of the eight teams, uh, two of the teams are of course the Saigon uh, organization itself. Saigon Joker has been one of those, a very veteran name in the GPL itself, has never finished the game in less than fourth place. Definitely indeed, they always manage to consistently make the top eight as well as top four, I do believe, and unfortunately Chris, there's a little bit mistaken that one because I do believe in the last split oh of the yeah. GPL with the Taiwanese teams, they were knocked out in oh, oh the yeah. quarterfinals to the Sister Team Master 5. Uh, that's right, that's right. My bad there, my bad. But it's okay, it's yeah. okay. Be because you no see, words. There, there's always this perception. I always will remember SAJ being always the you know, top ranked, they're always in the top 8. and It's very natural for me to assume that you know SAJ is just going to make all the way in. We'll have to see if that's going to happen this time around though. Because this is probably one of the best chances for them to make champions, but also one of the worst chances because every single team that they have faced against has stepped up the game so much. Everyone's so hungry and so thirsty to prove themselves at the title shot right there, so they're going to go all the way and try to get that in for themselves. Definitely, here we are moving into the game itself. So both teams going for a guard 5 spread. No very major invades. Oh, in fact, yes, Aces fit. Oh, my bad. They are the ones to move in this floor. Moving very aggressively into the right buff side of Saigon Joker's jungle. That's right, so we're gonna try to secure some vision for themselves as uh, they are gonna move in to that one. Safety is gonna wrap around the corner right here. Gonna save very, s sorry, gonna stay very safely in uh, the hidden territory right here. They will plant that walk down onto the red side. And gonna back off now. So a bit of vision to spot out where safety eventually gonna is and next water as well gonna wrap around the corner he's gonna do that level one cheese to get those saplings in onto the razor beak can and then eventually pick up level two for himself we have to see if slay does the same with the sun pick up some damage from the dart and then start to wrap the support start another camp for himself as well so on the side of SAJ over here Looks like he will be going for interesting lanes up in this situation to try to get the most out of this Malkai start. Oh, a small pause is uh, coming in place for these guys. Please, not too bad of a lag issue. And of course, uh, this time around, we are playing on the tournament realm, so we 
can see that we are jumping into game much quicker than before. And we'll see if uh, this technical issue resolves it itself. And I just want to quickly touch on Saigon Joker's team composition now that we have the time. I really like the I fact that uh, Carrot has gone for that Lulu support. It, it, it just opens up so much opportunity for the rest of the members to you know, go for a different champion that has the damage potential. And then just let Lulu, uh, she's going to get a few AP items of her own. So by that, by itself, she will be able to supplement the, the shields and even the speed boost that Sue is eventually going to be. So I have to say, comparing these two team compositions, rather even in nature, both of them bringing rather interesting components to the table. DDT has a very large advantage in any period of the game, but I have to feel that SJ is scaling slightly in the favor. They have the Senna available for themselves. But Ace of Spade should definitely have to all Rihanna, and we all know how devastating a 5 man shock is. Uh, we do have a lane swap coming in place as well, so it will be both uh, Sue as well as Carrot moving up into the top lane to face off against a change in the situation with the water very similar to the last game that we saw as well and it is already cycled so they're coming up ahead in terms of the map movement but it looks like with all the squads that Ace of kind of pulled up for themselves they don't quite manage to spot this uh, lane top situation right there so I just want to take away the blue buff as well interesting option coming through for these guys and we are possibly looking at a deep invade coming through here will they spot out straight right here and manage to get down there or not by it it's really going to be the latest again I'm gonna try to deny that away from them as well. Oh my oh, goodness! They don't get it! Yeah, that's why Shady is uh, gonna hit the. You know, he's gonna hit level 2 as well. But that was the goal going over to Shady in that game. And uh, right now it is gonna be mixed with as well as they're denying away the red box. What a technical movement coming through from the Cyclone Joker squad. I am very impressed with what I are doing right now. I mean, if only they were able to steal that camp away from Slay, that would have been huge. I mean, if they were to stay, steal that away from Shady, that would have been huge. So it looks like he just trying to last it onto their safety. Not really getting the mechanical precision he needed to make the play happen. But in the grand scheme of things, it is to uh, Ace of Spade that's coming ahead out of that one because with all this timing that Safety and Mixwater uh, Fight to go in onto the red side jungle. They did give up a lot of time to uh, Mew, who does pick up the crop camp on top of uh, the opponent's red top as well. So, in the grand scheme of the Ace of Spade, did not lose out too much. And we did get Shady now flying over to the crop camp as well. So, very interesting. What a size twice as well. I think it's safe to say. Thank goodness there is no fantasy LTS in the GPL. It's not everyone's just gonna deselect or you know, just put straight off the roster after tonight. I mean, but this is rather interesting because he knows he's facing a lane so to Marisa. I mean, I died once to the Raptors, just gonna die twice to the Crocs maybe. Visit Wolves and die a third time as well. Because there's just no way I'm gonna be getting any experience in the top lane. Or maybe he feels that with these two levels and this extra bit of experience to go in the back, get the boots available for himself and head into the lane. I try to pick up some bonus experience and farm against the Tristana who is currently facing the lane. That's why it looks like both support are mirroring the movement as well. They will send Carrot down to the bottom lane and Sigo is going to move up to the top lane as well. And the thing about Siren is that he doesn't do all too bad against the Ace Champions because the wall of the onslaught is going to something himself in the lane. He's going to use that skill. Just look at that, just constantly harassing down on the Ace Champions. So it's not too big of a problem for him. And so it's going to take a long time to try to clear out this uh, minion wave under the turret as well. It's gonna open up some chances. Everyone's gonna move towards the blue side jungle. Where are they gonna focus? Are they gonna get the, the kill on the carrot? He's going to take it now, fight those, give them a piece combo, but first block goes over to Mew, and here comes the TP on the back end. So Sue's gonna focus on the Mew right now. Who's the blue buff gonna go into? It's gonna go into the hands of safety. Right now they are gonna focus down to Shady, but a very nice kill coming in. And EQ once again flashing into Shady. He's gonna go down, and on the back end, Mixed Water is gonna try to hold the side of Passive. Here comes the Scion Passive, they are going to chase him down. Lopina is going to have the frozen shot to in fact slow him down for a bit. But here comes the play. He's going to go down here. It is going to be double kill coming in. But it is going to be safety tricking up the killing speed as well. And right now it is going to be Sue zeroing in onto a keyhole. Who is going to pick up the kill? It's going to be Sue. Seven kills in the span of six minutes.
I mean, that was just insanity over there. They go in, Ace is fade. They try to make a play difficult one. But this is the thing, when you swap in the top side of the map, SCG, the other ones who are going to be having the map control on the side, and Ace's fade just didn't respect it. They got caught out, and after they just started losing members one by one in the entire the fight. And that's going to be giving Walter to go over to the Tristana here and accelerating her build path rather quickly. Yeah, that's right, and in the grand scheme of things, even though it does look like it, the gold farm is pretty even, I just want to break down the two allocations of both teams right here. Because three of those kills went over to Safety, and we know that he is one of those guys who is quite reckless when he does get a hit. So he's going to go back. He has already finished up that water enchantment uh, on top of the range of the So he's going to do a lot of damage at the six minute mark. And if you look over at the side for Interspin, two of those kills has gone over to Safety. We know that uh, Oriana is at the state of the game where she's not that great in the early stages anymore so gonna give her a bit of acceleration in terms of the item build and of course like you mentioned Sue as well finishing up that BF squad gonna do a lot more damage as compared to Sue. Now Sue as well as Carrot they will be hitting back into the bottom lane so they're normalizing out the against one another. Sion does have a slight CS lead over the Maokai I do believe she will have to experience lead as well but here's the thing the BF squad completed on the Tristana they helped her create a very large part of her early big lane phase and now it's just Shady just dealing all the damage with the raw of the Slayer down onto Nick Bottom, the top lane. He will be trying to sustain that up with the three assists he got earlier, as well as the regeneration items he picked up for himself. That's right, and we do have a bit of a roam coming through. Group up together with a Seahole, perhaps trying to be one and secure some uh, vision for themselves. And indeed, they will have that down by the upper area. Now, if he's gonna move us over to the so gonna be able to stay in late much further than it is now. Zero one is two to charge. Coming on the back and Carrot finds himself in a very awkward position. Will he go down to Slay? I don't quite think so, but that's a lot of damage down. And two with the one inch hop onto Slay as well. So don't do too much damage to that follow over there. Gonna back up for now. I do believe that there was the animation for oh, the yeah. grenade charge. That's right as well, yeah. So new animation for the set I thought that was the one inch hop. Pretty uh, like, it's so similar in terms of its animation, right? Now Sue going on the next one over here as he the last more auto attack that grenade is gonna grow razor and raider and it's gonna be doing more damage when it finally detonates. They try to catch up safety over there. Both of them jousting for control over the dragon pit, but both of them kind of half committed, not really sending or committing too much resources to go in for that one. Just changing high five actually high five just to meet each other and each other's vision over there. So despite that very bloody start for these two guys, it has been awesome so far and GP is gonna spot out uh, safety on the side as well. So it's gonna be a botch jungle attempt so far as as well as the keyhole coming on the back end here. Red buff has now spawned once again for so Ace Fade and once again that comes to contention Safety is now level 6 against Blue's level 5. So Cataclysm is definitely out for grasp here. This water is going to be there to back up his jungle for a very strong objective for so coming over for uh, the Jokers in this game so far. And uh, down in the bottom lane we do see Shrew struggling a little bit against Slay in the situation there. She's kind of doing some work in the early game against the Tristana. Now the Tyrant goes into moving around the map, taking the initiative to move in, get some aggressive invades of your own, and shoving in the lane. They will be the first thing to move towards the box. Oh. Lovina gets caught out. That's right, he's on the back end, so he's getting caught in a very weird spot. But it is the support player that picks up the kill. But then again, Tyrant goes in, they are looking to capitalize the kill in. On the carry here, will they pick up a kill on the carry? No, not quite yet. Two people kill on the kill. Both jumpers now going against each other. Here comes the shockwave. Sue has no flash over the wall, and he does manage to do so over the thick chunk of wall. But carry is going to be sliced up here on the back end, and he's going to be made into a broth as he goes back to base. Well, Carrot, his simple play has been better crash than was so far, and I mean. He has been consistently getting caught up by this crossbow over here and he has been forced to use a lot of the summoner spells in a very defensive position and calling a lot of unnecessary help on the rest of his team. So, I have to wonder, he, had, he really has an adapted to this situation and Lovita definitely being a very huge villain in that one, getting caught out walking into an area knowing that he's a sweet, has been actually contesting the dragon area as well. Yeah, I think it goes back to the point that you mentioned when they place their sweet against Iron Dragon, they kind of look a bit sloppy and uh, at times, we don't really know what to do. Uh, right now, 
Our camera guy is showing us as well that uh, Su has come for that very early adverse wait to try to stack up more and go up on his end. But in the grand scheme of things, Sargent Jokers is a state of then very even on in terms of the whole count here. Uh, key item to point out though, we do have uh, you know, Slay at this point finishing up that phase. So we have a component uh, to finish for that CG4, so we can look forward to a lot of burst damage coming out on the air. And I think that is also why Su is staying back, staying put to the you know, third range. Does not want to go anywhere too close to Slay. He knows that he's not going to win out in any sort of skirmishes at this point in time. In fact, as he's moving around the sideline, trying to go for a sneaky death sentence over there. Su being all the wise in person by the bait. And using the explosive part, very quickly coming down. In the back end, we do see him coming around, though. It looks like both of them are gonna back off for now. And could have been a potential uh, opportunity for Saigon Jokers to try to go for the dragon, but looks like that's not the case. But a multitude of wards being dropped around the area, not being capitalized on, though. And in the mid lane, we did see Stapy flashing in uh, in the direction of Jinky. Perhaps wanting to pop the cataclysm, but I don't think. So now Saigon Joker is still moving around, they're gonna be picking up the dragon for themselves. The rest of the HP space is still trying to clear out the vision, but this is really dangerous. They might end up finding themselves walking to the trap of which Saigon Jokers, they have the right amount of vision down and now they, are they gonna pull the trigger? Are they gonna be basing it? Oh the last one gets cleared out and now there we go. It's flying up this dragon. Is real Saigon Joker starting up the dragon? But now with the op on cooldown, is Ace is going to be moving in to pick up the dragons once again. He said he's just going to be dropping some wards and then backing away from them. I think it's so it's doing a good job using the trinkets very well to prevent SAJ from stealing the dragon away or creating a Yeah, that's right. And I just feel like overall as a, as a whole, when it comes to the vision around the dragon, it's a piece of full effect. The push being Saigon Jokers not really maximizing that vision that they had for themselves. And they did see a couple of Ace of State members backing off of that area. Uh, they didn't do the dragon, wanted to go in onto Jinky, but that attempt failed as well. And then for Ace of State, I just feel like overall as a whole, uh, during that dragon struggle over there, they just had the better warding efficiency. They, war they just took a couple of wards over there, two wards over there for them to set out the entire position for Tiger Sphinx as well. And then they putting out five or six wards at one time, but only you know, getting the win at the end of the day and not making full use of it. One to get some downtime of this here. Both teams are content to farm and now neither one really feeling too pressure to make any plays happen. Successful Dragon Defense is both times and oh, oh there, there we go, the Cataclysm! And into the teleport as well. It gives up the stop range, trying to lock Jinky down, but it is Levita that takes the kill. It gives up the unstoppable onslaught on the king. He's not too sure how much he can do in this situation. Yeah. Well, he has a defense to go for soak up some damage on the back end. Carrot is going to join the regroup and join the rest of the team as well. Safety is brought down quite low at this point of time. So it is going to be one kill for Saigon Jokers, but I doubt they will be able to do that. In the right now, Zach is going to get started by Carrot. Start there. Ace of State and Day You know what? It's already that we are going to try to keep things off. Safety is quite low at this point of time. Will goes out first, stop away. Carol getting hooked and getting melted down so far to Shady in that case and right now it is going to be a party for Dragon. The leash is still on to him and he's taking a lot of damage. He's still and post traps getting pushed around. It is going to be a Shady that is back to the pick set now after a long struggle that has started. It's about 5 minutes. I mean, once again, Carrot, you just had a question, the play is coming from him. He's just walking and then gets a fix up by his opponents. He transitioned from the mid lane, had some okay, decent performance on this mage champion, but now transitioning over to this Lulu in this four position. I have to say, he has been rather disappointing. Yeah, that's right, contributing to about half of the six uh, deaths that Cyber Kill is going right now. I think he perhaps he's at a point where he's still trying to you know, figure out his position. Also, doesn't know quite yet that you know as a support you're pretty much very reliant on your positioning. So far he's just been caught out in a very good place. Hopefully he will get to you know, correct that as the game goes along. But as for now, Saigon Joker is still pretty much matching up to the whole count that Ace of has, so not too bad at this stage of the game. And I have to say the longer this game drags out, the better it is for Saigon Jokers. They do have the late game scaling, 
um, just stun on their own and they have the multi and the charge, so all these guys are just gonna skill immensely well in the later stages of the game. And you compare that to AK State, yes, they do have a 4 key who has a mid game power spike, but 16 minutes into this one, he just finished up the three points. He needs to be the one capitalizing right now. Okay, he is making that. Definitely in these with no ace to speed. The other ones, they've completed a few fair bit of items for themselves. Trinity Force completed on the Cocky, Radiate and Holy Grove. Fourth to Ariana. This might be a window of opportunity where they start to pressure things against the Cyborg Jokers. Right up in the top lane, well, Lucy makes one of the to go for the Rod of Ages. I think that a lot of Valkyrie players now are instead, you know, opting straight out for the Righteous Glory, but. I think he wants a couple of AP stack up his opponent so he can actually deal damage to Ace's fate. But we'll see if that uh, kind of bosses up his time a little bit because he's gonna move, lose out on that movement skills that a lot of players desire in that Maokai thing. Oh, SHG hiding in the cry brush over here, trying to pick out a support on the top lane. Should they decide to walk in? Oh, did they get it? They do clear up the ward. Rob the Slayer comes in one ticket going for the ward. Smash comes down, knocks in, slows her up. But the rest of the SHG is there for the back. Uh, and Slate getting taken down quite low in the bottom lane and uh, explosive shot being used as well. I believe that was the ultimate being pop by two. Just to bring Slay down to a rather uncomfortable range for him. But mind you, it is still a 5 boost going up against the Static Shield that he has uh, you know, shady up in the top lane. Just using their double onslaught to get away from the peculiar situation as in this case, three man stack now with the leader coming around from the back and the daily still around the corner to wave clear up and to get any sort of damage that will take down. Probably Sue jumping in as well, trying to stop the recall as uh, play. Moving back now, we'll pick up the source of the way. So he's not gonna get hooked in. Well, so a lot of back and forth in the map, but I don't think it's solid being established. What a defenseless uh, after the dragon head. I think this game is gonna be about a slow one where it's gonna be all but one big siren fight because both of these two teams are just gonna jockey for position around the map. Neither one wanted to commit too aggressively into their opponent's half of the jungle so far. That's right, and we will see Nick Twitter return to lane now. There's the Broad of Ages stacking up on his own end, and up at the top lane, we do see. Uh, the Shady completely experienced with something well. so very focused towards the double AP composition of the right itemization for himself now. Safety is going to come back around as well. Carrot moving into mid lane and we'll see if he will be able to make a difference on the public and he's going to go in for it and they're going to just straight up engage with the Shady but just looking at both of them they don't really have that much damage I mean, that was a summoner spell, but the flash forward to get a twisted advance down. And Shady didn't even care. He doesn't have a splash, just walked out of that one. It seems like a little bit lacking oh. on damage. Can the Cleanser down? Now he's on the field. Twisted advance follows as well. Shady drops him a chance to stand over here. Yeah, Finally, they do get a kill. Yeah, that's right. Then the three balls, Maokai as well as Traveling, I think they just have about. I don't know, 100 damage to that 1 million HP that JD has. So it didn't take a long, long time for them to chunk him down, and it will be the top lane so it is best to play. In the middle end, though, Lovita's gonna try to stay alive, but Mew has already taken him down with that Dragon Space, and Mew is gonna soak some damage from the turret, but we'll have that shield to, in fact, make sure that he gets out of there safely. As he and Carrot force the rotate him to the mid lane in order to make the defense happen. You know, as AJ probably the teleport from the water as well to move the corner to this part. AJ is trying to get his team happening with the poke as well as wave here from the Oriana and the cock. 20 minutes into this game. This game is that even though. Only about 200 votes compared to these two teams. Saigon Jukas having the upper hand. 7 to 7 in terms of kill count. You must be able to look at the experience and the turret counts fairly even throughout the map. The only difference that is separating these two teams right now is the fact that Ace's Fate does have that one dragon counter on Dan. So Dragon will be respawning in the 10 seconds. This time it is the Saturn Jokers who have priority of reaching this dragon fate. But they haven't even killed the thing about the source of the wall to their own side of the jungle just yet. So Ace's Fate, they should be feeling very comfortable about this. Yeah, that's right, 
then uh, I got Jokas once again gonna surround this dragon pit with a lot of this Look at how quickly he's going down the turret. Shows he's trying to wind more of that thing for himself as he's uh, going to be there to tear out the big spot of the top lane. Shady's going to do the same. Zero what's going down to the bottom lane and uh, carry out his good pushing duty. He does have to teleport up as well. But we'll be able to join the fight as quickly as he wants to be. Ultimate is up as well. So I, don't think I think they're very aware of that. So decided to back off right now. But that Shady has a lot of free time to chunk and do damage to the top lane second I mean, there was no damage to items on the side. He's just going to be using a web near the pound of oh, That one here comes to teleport. That's right. TP on the back end. He's going to take it down solo. He's going to go down to the Cataclysm and on the back end. Shady a bit late to the fight now. Will they choose to take on though? This is a very dangerous territory. Big Water getting boosted back up the health with the wild growth. And a very good strike off. It's gonna spot out multiple positions from Ace Escape. And that was a pretty terrible play coming through from Saigon Joker. They saw the ball in action from the game and they decided to not overextend their advantage. And they push towards the mid lane, will take down one more objective for themselves. And finally, finally opening up a small gap. They will take away the Dragon as well to deny the Dragon Escape from Ace Escape. To Ace Escape. They do lose the second dragon away from Dragon Joker. So now they're tight one on the piece in terms of this dragon. Just like I said, I think this game is not going to be coming down to anything much in his specific timing window. Yep. It's going to be coming in one last fight around Baron. Right. And who executes around the battle? I just feel like right now, Slayton, the desperate world of that game. Not you know, dealing too much damage, or rather, he's not being uh, overly assertive of his advantage right now. He's just giving up so much free time for Sue to farm up, and he's very comfortable with where he is right now. Getting, getting chucked up quite low, though. The Ignite's not going to fight too much. The lane Sue is going to be there with the rest of the team. Safety is definitely going to back off right now, but there is going to be the rest of the Cyclone Joker there to back him up and to try to defend the mid lane turret. Or at least trying to you know, force them back. On the back end, you're going to see this for the diving. Very good to Adam Blight. Oh, getting taken down. Here comes the Swap Over He's going to get taken down. A key hole picks up the kill. And they will take out the big lane turret as well. So, it's going to be an instant save. Bulldozing their way down to the mid lane. And five on Joker. Not knowing what to respond off of that. I'm in Nick's water. <laughs> the jungler just went back to the base. You have five men there. All five members of Ace's team show themselves on the map and you still engage into the opponent team for and five. With this going to start off, I have to say that that was definitely a mistake coming from Nick's Water. There's, there's no other way to put it. And it cost yeah. him his own life as well as the target bonus in the of Ace's face. Yep, so with that mistake, it is some more gold being thrown back to his team. A lot of mistakes here there that is keeping the game relatively even. And um, we're going to try to secure the Scarlet Trap himself to secure some vision around the dragon but then again we're at a point time where there's no immediate objective for both challenge so they will be quite happy to uh, go back to lane and pick up those farm up and then wait for the next big objective to challenge so I'm kind of wondering you know Su previously was the support player for Saigon Jokers, right? What do you think is... I don't know, we've seen a lot of AD carries uh, transiting into the support role. I think the first one, the very first one being Yellow Star, was the most famous case for Win Fanatic. And then uh, in the NA LCS, we do see LTAC being transferred into the support role as well. But very rarely do we see support go into the AD role. Do you think it's a very difficult transition? To I, I would think that AD carry over the support is actually more successful. Just to keep professionals in the transition over from say support over to AD carry, you still have all the chance to get the best of the mechanics. But in terms of support, AD carry is support. So slightly from very passive, which is very purely mechanical role. You're transitioning over to a more risk taking and more decision making type type of role in the form of support. I feel that it's just actually more difficult because the decision making is something that's a lot of people still have problems grasping all around the world. Right then, 
does look like Sue is uh, taking a good count of this on his back. But then, oh, now in the mid lane, the fight breaking out, and they're just going to take the first over stage. Then they're wrong to break through the Cataclysm. The Cataclysm is going to be dropped. Levita drop the Vita gets dropped down to the left and gets to the center. Big Four is going to be the next one to call out here. Why go on the corner? The big one's going to come raining down as well. And it is going to be quite a nice shot to the back end. Kilo now on the back end. Still not going down. The heel's going to get up in order to save his life. And here comes the big one landing down onto Levita. And now Slay is going to make the trail before count. They are going to take him down onto Karen. A very long and standard chase. And will we see finally one more kill being secured here? I don't quite think so. The kill did land onto Carrot, but did the right decision and decided to back off for now. So, Silent Jokers once again trying to force in a little bit too much. Interested. Right on point to turn things around. I have to say the way they're controlling those fights is just right on point. Leaving the very tanky target in the front of Shady. And then when they see that, okay, as usual, you're blowing all these spells into Shady. It's okay, even if he falls, he's gonna revive with the passive. Then that's when we start to pull over the Oriana with the Lee Sin. Let the poke damage and that entire time. Play on the coffee was able to do so much. Blood turns in pretty force by completed already. He was just chunking down and raining damage onto the cycle of the squad. So I feel like the big point that was missed there was uh for CC and so when he popped the captain it was so early on and he did not let like, have anyone inside. Ideally what you want to have is mixed water in the front line to soak up that. But the thing is if you want that to happen, you need someone to keep them in place and safety is supposed to fulfill that role. They quite managed to do and even release that cataclysm much earlier than it was uh, in order to make sure that it doesn't block on his one. So he's got to be quite uh, careful with how to place the out of the But for whatever reason, unfortunately, was just zoned out and chopped down by Slay of course. And that's why we mentioned in the mid game, it's almost certain that Hockey is going to reign supreme. Not forgetting, they do have the Vita on that design for us. And I have to say, it's a rather deflating performance from Lovita so far. Usually, we see him play this Assassin, play the Fist, play the Death, as well as the LeBlanc and get all these high leg view plays in. But on the Lissandra so far, all he has done is kind of get caught by his opponents, drop the ultimate on himself, and then subsequently fall to the Well, we'll see if the Saigon just goes they will give up this dragon over here, so just a few seconds they're gonna be going over to Ace's fate and trying to return some damage into the mid lane turret then uh, top side of the map, mid quarter is pushing this one, but quite a close push. I felt like that was a pretty slick decision from Psycho Joker because they could have simply chose to commit to one lane there and at least take out the second turret, but right now the damage just split into half and half and not really big that's the first the last one that uh, before the first dragon Well, I'd say that that was nonetheless a very disciplined call coming from the Cyberpunk Jokers. Yes, you're right, they could have just decided, okay, we're gonna go for mid lane, we're gonna go for fall lane or something Hot like that, lane, but you know. I think it's not so much that you're concerned about trading objectives, it says, okay, we've got the one dragon, the first dragon, we're fine with that. Second dragon, bonus damage to tar, it's not an important, we're gonna give you that, and then after that, we're just gonna push out the waves, pick up some bonus CS cocktails. You can see, shoot 279 to stay. 239, 40 CS are they to carry. Yeah, that's right, fair enough. And uh, the better Sue gets, the happier SAJ is. As uh, he's slowly working towards, I believe, should be the Blood Firsters as he's going for the PS1. And speaking about Blood Firsters, Slay does have one completed for himself as well. I believe he should be going for the pickaxe, uh, sorry, towards the last whisper next as he has a pickaxe shot for himself. And in the mid lane as well, we do see Jinky finishing up that um, you know, death cam as well to avoid stuff. So he's gonna pack so much damage with the command song I'm almost feeling a little bit disappointed with you guys, but you should have retreated. You know, you're up against a Scion. You're up against a Lee Sin, who's gonna be building rather tanky as well. Yep. Just go for the build of the room king, or maybe even the last whisper in this part of the game. Yeah, we'll see if uh, that is gonna affect the gameplay for a bit, but so far it is quiet for these guys. We see a small group of the ball members strong and in the bottom lane we do see Shady as well as Levita kind of just duking out duking out between themselves but these guys teleport is now up for both mix water as well as Shady. Look around there. It is a yeah it is gonna be a 
can defend from Sue safety as well as Carrot, but the longer that they choose to be good, the longer that they take the to do damage to this one. See the rotations coming from Ace of Spade right now as they should try to Adelaide SK gave me a little bit of time to run over there, but not really having all too much success with it. Yes, they're getting additional CS for the leaners, but Ace of Spade, they're just being more decisive, moving around the map and picking up these objectives themselves. And now control of the raid side jungle, of, of the raid buff jungle. Oh, here we go now, Kirsty. Not quite landing the flag, but a huge cataclysm to lock down multiple members. And now Nick Water finally finding himself in prime position. And here comes a storm into all spot. Only finding some slamming into the wall. Nick Water has to splash off of that fight over there. Levita gets taken down. It's not a good time for Atlas to have Sue. He's gonna back all the way to the big officer. And his shade gonna try to get the knock up here, but not quite gonna be the case. But it's it find himself in a huge position right there. They will take out the mid lane inhibitor as well as the inhibitor turret. Luvida, that was definitely a mistake coming from him. He wouldn't dare flash into the corner and before he could get anything, before he could get anything down at all, he was just instantly bursted out by the Oriana Shockwave. He tried to lay the Wombo combo on top of one another, but it just wasn't time to go just yet. And as a result, Ace of Spade, they win the fight very convincingly. Luvida not even getting the centers out and off in the fight. Oh, look at what Saigon Jokers are doing right here. Now, and I have to say that was in fact one of the best fights that I could do with the hope to take. Okay, but in fact, Casey landed a pretty decent cataclysm and makes one of finally diving into uh, the lines of the enemy winners to affect one of the rest of the team. Are they gonna go for this one? The safety is forced to skip away. Is that one? Here comes the re-engage! There we go now, a lot of AOE being stacked up on the back and four members being taken down so low, but Avila's gonna be the first to fall. Mew picks up that one and Shady now being the big DC older than Kids. He's gonna soak up a lot of damage. Two now on the back and does pick up the kill on the DC. And this one is gonna be the next target of course. The tanky DC is soaking up so much damage though. Sue still has a lot of time to work with it. Shady is gonna be the next focus right here. Explosion shot still chasing down onto the back end here. Shady, is he gonna go down? No! It's gonna be the fact play that goes down first and Sue gets the reset. He's gonna go in for Mew and this might be the time for Sue to go all the way. The triple kill in fact goes over to safety and man, we were just saying that Saigon Jokers found himself in a difficult position and that just happened. I mean, that was the fight that was supposed to happen when Lovita flashes the triple kill. Go down there, get the root of the mouse, and then drop the mouse in the shelf, drop under a rotation of the and then just pop the Zonia. But in that situation, Lupita just whipped it. He just dropped the ball in the scenario, and but the moment he was able to get it, fantastic credit to safety over there for beating it. We were able to win the fight so convincingly and pick up the for themselves. You know what, Jason? I think you're secretly a prophet. You know, you said at the start of the game that the Baron fight is going to be so crucial for these two teams. And there you have it. It was the Baron fight that actually gave Saigon Jokers the edge that they need. Right now they are at a 1.5 thousand bodies, but more importantly, they still have the Baron buff stacked up on the end. So they will be able to deal with the mid lane. They never push a little bit easier. They have one member to defend that one now. And Ace of Spade now, I think they're regrouping the scrambling to the dragon. I say, you know what, guys, we lost that Baron fight. Sorry, we lost that Baron fight. It's okay. We're going to try to take the third dragon now. But it's going to be Safety that goes in for the steal though. And now on the back end, who's going to get hooked in for now? Safety is going to zone out the rest of the team. Like this quarter, as well as Safety is going to zone out the rest of the team. And it's Lapita with the great confusion knock up. Not going to be run for too long though. Big quarter on the back end. Trying to go in onto you know, a lot of shoes coming in. The Vita picks up the kill onto a keyhole on the back end here. And Ace of Spade are forced to retreat off now with the Baron up Saigon Jokers. I mean, Chris, I would love to take credit for predicting the fight around the Baron itself, but that wasn't what I was thinking. I was thinking, okay, they're gonna farm for 40 minutes, typical EU LCS, <laughs> and then I was like, oh, the fight at Drag, the fight at Baron, somebody gets 4 for 1, 3 for 1, and then the game just ends there. But rather I was wrong because Ace of Spade, they were able to pick up the inhibitor target for themselves. Definitely credit to them. They were able to execute sort of a siege composition with the Caucasus and the Oriana in the middle stages of the game to pick up the inhibitor target for themselves. And as they change, the moment they hit the power spike on the center, completing the bench, it's going in hand and winning those fights after that. 
Well, and still, the game hasn't ended yet. So, the major brand fight happened. But, Saigo and Joker, only 2,000 gold ahead. Yeah. Well, we did see a pretty badass skill coming through from safety, though. Buck life safety. You know, just dragging him in front of every single member of this team. Taking that one down. Uh, the brand buff still running on the side of Saigo and Joker. Not for a long, long time. In fact, it's going to run out. Uh, in about a few minutes. But they will be able to pick up the top of off that one, so not too bad for these guys. And they're looking to the mid lane as well. And we are also hitting a point in the game where Sweet Top level almost hitting the max range on that uh, passive. He does have a really good argument on himself. He put an H plus person, so it's actually going to do a lot of damage. And with the long range cannon in his slowly coming on to the crowd, it's okay, it's the speed. Oh, they're going for the cocky! That's right, they is gonna melt down so far to fix up that one. Cactus on the back end as well, just to see the remaining members off. Cycle token, looking to make every single second of that Baron buff count. It has not run down for these guys, but they is now out of the equation for the next 30 seconds. So, will Cycle token be able to close? This one off for the mid lane at least, and here comes the wild rope on the back end, jumping in as well. Shady a double on from not landing on anyone, he gets knocked up into here. A lot of people for these guys though. Now he's going to go all the way to the back end here. He will see the first, sorry, the mid lane turret going down the field. Will take the to follow up though, I still quite think so. Now Levita in the middle of it, oh getting hooked in by the death testers. He might just go down over here, but no, he still survives for now. And Shady is going to go in, and it's going to be Shady that picks up on the back end here, every single member on his side Psycho just the same except for Suit, and he's gonna go in, ham onto this one, and right now the AC side is that he will take down the mid lane turret, the one that they have been desperately looking for for so long, and finally open that entrance up for themselves. Shady Downey has done a good job in this ultra tanky frontliner, but Sue at this period of time in the game has picked up so much items for himself. He has reached the level 8 maximum range on the Tristana, scaling objective for the Cyclone Jokers completely ready. And it's this way, they're just struggling so hard to get into the backline of the Cyclone Jokers. Right, and I'm also curious to see with Sue picking up so many kills in position. What is gonna be his final item? I feel like he should be going towards the last of the I think it's gonna be his uh, item of choice. It looks like the Bloodthirsters pick is not too bad for nothing like that. Extra speed did help him survive the couple of those spots. And you know, just enough time for our uh, character to in fact come back into play here using the help to get him the extra layer of shield for him to see. You know, Saigon Jokers. They know they've hit their winning conditions already, so all they need to do is execute cleanly, play a very slow game, and let you just rain down damage on his opponents. In fact, they might even just wait for him to finish the last miss, but get the six times and six losses to Stana before they make anything happen and try to end out the game. They already have the million and hit the target. What they need, all they need, is still not on the bad list yet. There is Dragon, a minute and a half away, very two minutes away. That's right, that should be the next uh, big fight that we will look for. For both guys, in fact, it has to Dragon stack. I would not be too surprised if I see one of them give up that dragon and then try to rush down the Baron and the fight. That's going to be the case. I think Cyber Joker has that edge because my JB is very healthy to develop that champion. And he had to play now, 2 2 and 4. Uh, his window of strength is now over. The mid game has sort of closed by itself. He does still pack a punch, but so there we go, take slot to Tristana. Picking up the last one. This is going to be a very difficult situation for Asus to do it because Shady, he wasn't going to circle too much damage with the Tom Mel as frozen half on himself, but now that he has his armor penetration item, Cyber Jokers, they're going to be just able to tear it through. The front line of Ethan Spade and get into the very soft back line of Oriana and Cocky. That's right. Sue now is going to be like the other bottom lane to put a shot the wave out before moving towards the dragon area. About 10 seconds more before that one's going to come back around and bring back in the line of the Spade. They will lose the bottom lane second to the turret as well. 
And with for every one of it staying away from their area, I think they will completely do not want to take the unnecessary risk. But from 5% losing speed, we'll see how much Saigon Jokers can make use out of that one. As we do, the the more important objective. Oh, this might be the big bear fight that I was talking about. 40 minutes far for that. Yeah, round 2. This is closest to my prediction this time. But here we go. Fully scared up Saigon Jokers. 6 slot of Tristana. They're gonna stop Barrett. Or are they? No, not quite. Just securing the vision around the area. You, you know, you wanna be safe about it. You don't want to just go in you know, without any vision, without any sort of indication whatsoever on where your opponents are. And they are standing in the base. A little bit of position in this one. Does not have any sort of speed, so we might just see Ace of Spades brute force their way down to the mid lane. I think Lavida understands that one. He's gonna TP back into the base, or rather, recall back into the base. This just gives a lot of time for Ace of Spades to regain the game around this game. The Cyber Jokers gives some ready to throw Brampton over to the Ace of Spades team. Let's see if Ace of Spades will be able to make it an office, but here we go, is the end game. Right, he's probably getting caught in with the death center before. I don't think that's the guy you want to win. You want to in. And right now, it's going to be Nick Waller smoking up so much damage. Shady, though, smoking up a lot of damage onto Ace of Spades. And it is Clay now that picks up the kill onto uh, Nick Water at this point of time. And the rest of the team kind of just backing off, retreating for now. And we need to try to get some of that one. And here we go now. Cataclysm on the back end. A few more now. The next focus for Lovina. And it's very good. Great to see that. It's gonna lock out man, multiple members from the Ace of Spades here and Carrot is trying to run off. She's still very healthy on the back end though. It is gonna be a 3 for 1 trade at the end of the fight. Saigon Jokers safety went in too deep on that one with no damage to follow up whatsoever. And it is going to be a, you know, missed opportunity for Saigon Jokers yet again. I mean, I think this is what we were discussing earlier when you transition from the support role to an AD carry role. I think the most difficult thing to learn is the gut from when you do that. We have a 6 slot to Tristana, the rest of the team engaged in already. No, normally, if it was a better AD carry, we have just seen them brought in and just hit the team up. If that was Prince over there, he would just jump into Tristana and capitalize off the AOE damage that Lovita already had dealt and just reset off everyone on Ace's Fate simply because he has the Benchy skill, lost people completely already, just killed the entire Ace's Fate and carry the team 1v5. That's right, eh? But he just couldn't put it in That's right, and I think off of that, it's a punch that we do that one. That was really not a rather rapid thing. That's really cool as well as Eric and Bobby Hill. We need to come in and talk to him as well. We need to do it like this. Let's do it, get it off of the back. Who's the best? He's gonna get it in. It's still gonna be the fight to secure that one. And it's a gonna chase and follow through with the rest of the Tiger Joker squad right there. This one is still surviving, but I think not for too long. Real picks brought that one up as well. So, it was a 3 for 1 in the past. Two members this that just good. survived will see the rest of Tiger Joker's fall with Ace of Spade now having the Baron buff on the back here. I think this should be going to them. It will take some time to see them off, but the numbers are fun should be able to move on the way down. So it was a fight around the Baron Fed after all that ends the game. But this time it's Aces where he wins the fight. And now here they go. They try to go in onto this one. Saigon Joker is putting up a defense. They're going to come to Aces. It's going to be first and down. Yeah, that's right. Lovita is not going to join in the fight. He knows that he beat those in. This one's going to go down. Aces is going to do a lot of damage on the back of that one though. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, they're kind of waiting for the... Uh, you know, the bidding ways to join them, but I feel like Shady could have just gone in, you know, perhaps died once and came in and used it. Ultimate to, sorry, the passive to kill stuff back up and Lovina picks up the kill onto Jinky. Looks like the game is not quite over as the Carrot does pick up the kill onto Shady. He's gonna use that passive to pound away at Carrot, but I don't think that's gonna be enough that to So they pick up the Baron, they get the inhibitor and an extra start as well. I have to say, props to him. Yeah, that was a fantastic hole over there. He was repeatedly able to just put so much threat at the AC state. He forced him to eat so much damage from the turrets as well. Yep, they were able to go on to that. I mean, I, we were calling it. We thought that AC state had already won the game. But once again, it's just one open. And I have to wonder if we're going to have to wait for another Baron for such another window of opportunity to offer. So 
you know, previously in the jungle fight where Saigon took us to look like they had the half hand, you pointed out that it was Su that was very hesitant to use the trigger to get the two sets off and then you know, perhaps for the ace of the ace of speed and then end the game with that one. Towards that finishing push for Ace of Spade, I felt like it was shady. He could have just sacrificed himself. He knows that with the uh, passive, he could have just revived back up and then countered him. Right that could have been the damage edge that he needed in order to close up the game. But no, that wasn't quite the case. And Ace of Spade is going to miss a huge window of closing out the game. Of which, we are back to it even between these two teams. 46 minutes in. I don't think we'll see a conclusion anytime soon. We'll have to see if that's going to be that one fight that decides it all. The next dragon is going to be spawning to this time with the bear buff on Ace of and the waves pushing in their favor. This one should be going over this damn fight. Easy. The question is, is SAG going to be moving in to contest that one? Or is Ace of going to bother with the Gestures at all? The like they're going to be going for the top lane in the turret. The problem is that both teams are not Take it down to about half the HP. Just off of a couple of other attacks. So I think HSP is gonna back off for now. Dragon is still out of contention, but everyone's just taking around the top side here. Try to back down. But the wave here is quite strong and still comes to beat down on the back end. This is the closest to go out the rest of the HSP. Still comes to Unstoppable onslaught. That time is the size of in. Two gets caught in. On the back end. Is he gonna go down? He's gonna go down. Mew picks up the kill. And this might be what Ace of Speed needs to close out the game. Saigon Jokers. Mixed Water still alive for now. Safety is gonna get slowed down by the ball as well. But everyone has their items towards the end. And this is gonna be it. As Ace of Speed finally finds the fight that they need in order to close out the game. After 48 minutes. I mean, that would have made the Fisher and the rest of the ULCS proud. Farm for 40 minutes, have these major fights around Baron, and then after that, the game just goes to shit for one of the other teams. And <laughs> that's what we saw over there. Unfortunately for Saigon Jokers, they lost the Baron fight. So, Ace of Spade, they were able to take that victory. And I have to feel, the villains of this game, Lovina in the earlier stages, we see him, he's died 10 times. 10 times. No Two-digit deaths on Lovina on the Lissandra. Not cool, man. And so